Hello everybody and welcome to Atomic Farms. Now this is the uh, Stone Valley, Illinois map. So I changed the side just to be clever. <laughs> Beautiful map, it's available on Giants Mod Hub. And uh, I've made a few changes in this map, just placeables and using the terrain tool and all that kind of stuff and put down little things in here that uh, I like. The sheds were a little too small for my taste, so I just replaced them with bigger ones in the same placement. And then I added little extras in like this. So this whole area has been transformed a little bit. But before I start blabbering on here, chewing the fat, uh, I wanted to tell you that this particular series now is going to be just like you see now. I've decided I would like to just start up a game, farming simulator or whatever game, and just play and talk about whatever comes to mind. So that's what I am going to do with this. So if that's something that seems interesting to you, I hope that you'll stick with me and I uh, hope you'll enjoy the video. In the past, people that um, are new to the channel, I did mostly role play stories and those may come back as well. But I tend to get very elaborate with them. Now, I'm not going to say that I did the best quality role play stories. Um, sometimes they're very cheesy, but no matter what video I do, I always put the best I can out in quality with the knowledge that I have at the time. So I'm always trying to improve. It may not seem like it, but I am. <laughs> so um, it's a very high bar I set for myself. And sometimes the pressure of that planning and creating new stories and all that can get a little overwhelming and sometimes, well, a lot of the times, you just want to sit down, open up and play the game. And that's what I've been doing. So as I'm walking along here, I'm going to give you a little tour of what I got going on here. And then I want to row and bale up this field here that I just harvested. It was a field of wheat and uh, I'm going to try something, well, not new and different, but new to 22. Back in FS15, I did a mod review on a New Holland baler that had the um, the wind rowing rakes built onto it. And I guess that's a thing in real life. They have them. Not very common to see, I guess, because they're expensive. But um, nevertheless, they are a real thing. And I loved it in FS15. I never really looked for it again in 17 and 19, but I suspect it was out there somewhere. But it came up on the Giants Mod Hub again in FS22, and I grabbed it. So one thing about the balers in FS22 is the margins, there is no margin. The collection node really goes from wheel to wheel on the pickup. When you get swaths like this, you tend to leave quite a bit behind. So. This is going to make life easier because I do a lot of my work from inside view of vehicles. I will do outside view because I'm making a video and I know there's a lot of people that also like that as well. So I will go between inside and outside, especially when backing up certain equipment because we still have that wonderful, uh, <laughs> you know, mirrorless driving and farming simulator. The mirrors are there for decoration. So, yeah, before I start, take a look at this little thing. Looks like a real country piece of junk that you'd see sitting in the weeds on a farm somewhere. But guess what, man? We go into outside view because inside view, basically, it's such a disaster that he put the camera forward against the window. <laughs> so I won't be using this all that much, but I just thought it was a lark, but it actually runs. Oh, yeah. This truck is very friendly to the environment. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Might need to put some high test gas in that. <laughs> It'll probably go in the tank and then out on the ground. Okay, so I put this little shed in here. And I've got, for the most part, these fields are so big, I'm gonna use the auger system you know, pulling an auger with a tractor and then loading it into a uh, tractor and trailer. But for fields that are close to the farm like this one, I can use this here because the silo is you know, right there. And this is going to be our grass cutting implement, the header and the little John Deere uh, self-propelled mower, if you will. My friend Aiden used something similar to this 
on Lone Oak Farm in real life. So uh, I like it. And believe it or not, I tried out, they have a trailing mower and farming simulator. I don't care for it. They've had it. It's come up before in other versions, but um, it has the steering assisted wheels on it. And when you're mowing, especially in a tight area, like when you're backing up and you don't want to go into another field, that thing can go all higgledy piggly. But it's this one right here. So I tried out this system and there was a reason why I had sold it off in past versions. <laughs> and so this one, even though it's got a smaller working width, it actually does the field much faster because it too has the steering assist wheels, but they're built into the unit, you know, like little flipping around shopping cart wheels. <laughs> and um, you just get things done quicker because you're not having to stop and wrangle something trying to back it up and turn it around and blah 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 probably spoke a little too much about the mower <laughs> and then i got this over here now these buildings come in a pack from um, the elk mountain wyoming map and that's on facebook elk mountain modding so this is what we're going to use going to row it up with this and it's just going to like two big arms like a fat man at a buffet it's just going to scoop it right into the mouth <laughs> Then I got a New Holland sprayer that I, you know, made it look like John Deere, just to kind of be a little matchy. There's a harvester. And I like to have some old equipment on the farm, so we've got the old uh, 4955 JD. And then I got a Challenger. This bad boy, uh, he's, he pulls the auger. Because you need 400 horsepower to pull the auger. But then this one's a 388 horsepower, and it can pull the plow or the cultivator, either one. And we'll leave that open. And I've noticed on this particular map, you can't pick up the sticks and twigs. These are supposed to be, um, you're supposed to be able to pick them up, but for the, you can't do it. And if I turn on my super strength, even still. So I went into Giant's Editor, loaded the map into Giant's Editor, and lo and behold, I can't even delete them off the map. So. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that, but uh, you'll find these laying around inside my, my barns as well. <laughs> so yeah, all these doors open up on this side as well. Really nice. And then I'm a magic seed and fertilizer kind of guy. I've done big bags before and I've done the manual fill type seed silos and fertilizer silos. And when you're filling up big machines that take thousands of liters of seed and fertilizer, it turns into not fun for me. <laughs> so I like magic seeds and magic fertilizer. You just pull up, it fills up. And then because the bags are sitting outside against the building, I thought it'd be nice to have a covered uh, area to come under here, covered port to pull under and uh, do your business. So not like you'd be fertilizing and seeding in the rain anyway, but I have a little bit of a shed problem, okay? Hello, my name is Atomic and I'm a shedaholic. <laughs> And this is a pull-through barn here, as you may have guessed. And I got the grain trailer in here, the corn header, the grain header, and the nice little Mac R truck. And this is on Giant's Mod Hub as well, and it comes with a long uh, trailer, and also it comes in a model where it has a dump truck back, and then a tandem trailer that you can hook up to it too. So two models to choose from. Very nice, I love it. And I used to drive a truck just like this, many years ago it was for towing and recovery we used to um, pick up other trucks and I uh, had drove them 75 Mac we had a new Freightliner at the time too and that thing was a piece of junk the Freightliner one time got stuck in the mud trying to pull out a dump truck on a construction site and I went down with the old Bulldog hooked it up to the Freightliner Freightliner was hooked up to the dump truck and I pulled them both out and that Mac didn't even burp so oh, I love that truck <laughs> So that's it for this. So, and then in here, here's a little oddity. Let me hit F5 on my keyboard, bring up the wireframe mode. This little collision, now it's not part of this. And I deleted this shed and took all the equipment out and it's something in the ground sticking up. It's not even that twig I looked uh, in Giant's editor, but I think it's one of the toys. Maybe the toy was moved someplace, but it's, collision and hitbox was not but for some reason you still can't pick it up so what happens is <laughs> if I try to back a tractor up and the implement closer to the wall it'll go over like this big hump <laughs> 
So I can't fix it in Giants Editor. I can't fix it in game. So it's just something I'll have to live with. And then this little Ford tracker, this is from OK Mods, as well as the uh, classic car that you saw in the thumbnail, which is right over here in the garage. Little Ford Ranchero, I think it's a 57. I think I just picked it up by accident. The perils of super strength. Now, why can't I open this door? Open up, open Sesame, come on. Open up, enter vehicle. Maybe it's too close to the door. And anyway, let's go around here. It always opens until I'm on in video. Yeah, it's, it's part too close, but here she is. And it's beautiful inside and out. Really nicely well done. Been a long time since I've really been on camera and uh, been a long time since I put out a video. And my wife has been getting on me um, to finish up. We need to finish up our lake series. Even though a lot of you weren't interested, we're still gonna see it through and finish it up. And then last but not least, this is also from OK Mods and it's a Ford flatbed truck. And couldn't use it to haul little odds and ends. Uh, it doesn't have auto load or anything on it. And I'm an auto load kind of guy with bales. And then this will be the bale barn. And you're gonna ask why is the wrapper in the middle? Well, because I like to put the bales because of the way the trailer unloads on each side. So I'd have, uh, you know, straw and maybe hay and then silage. And I won't be keeping it very long anyway because right now I don't have animals. At this point, I don't know if I'm going to have animals at all. I'll have to think on it. Uh, I like doing the cattle but um, I don't have any room left on the main farm for it. I'd have to put them someplace else, but it's something to think about. We'll see how far this goes. We'll see how receptive you all are to all this. All right, so this little guy here, we're gonna use him. And I'll try to remember to turn my head appropriately and uh, not do the exorcist head <laughs> spinning all the way around. There we go. So we'll just park this over here someplace for now. Get everything ready. Ready to pick up the bales. And let's see. Don't want to waste gas. Gas is expensive now. <laughs> gas and diesel. And we'll use this guy to pull the baler even though the other JD can do it. But I don't get to drive this one much. And plus it matches. <laughs> yeah, so the price of fuel, man, I was watching the uh, news broadcast and one of the senators, I believe it is, from Wyoming, she and her family own a ranch. And... Uh, she said at this point right now, because of the price of fuel, it's almost a detriment to go out into the hay fields this year. So they're going to be not making their own hay. They're going to be buying it. Now, also, if you play this map, you'll notice I found it kind of odd, but understandable. When the map author, usually when you finish the map and you want to put all the default vehicles in you do it on your own game save and he must have started to play or been testing because this portion of the field here was harvested and then one of your pieces of starting equipment your tractor and i think a cultivator yeah was over here and it had started cultivating the field and then it kind of got down to there and it just he just left it <laughs> so and then you take your default uh items in the save and you copy them into default vehicles and stuff in the map. And that way, that's what you'll always start with. And I do that for backup after I set up a map. But uh, yeah, I, I guess in some ways, it he did you a favor. You're not losing anything because um, the wheat that he took out of here is in my silo. So there it is. And there's more here now because I just harvested the rest of the field. But uh, so you didn't lose out on anything. But uh, yeah, he got you started. But I've, I've really never seen that before. So I, it's, I guess it's rude of me to say odd, but just something uncommon. All right, so let's unfold this bad boy. Yeah, I missed this implement. And man, does it look so much nicer now with the FS22 textures than it did in the past in FS15. So, and because of the width of the header that I use on the harvester, really is no need to row this up, especially with this. So I might be able to get rid of it. Widow, yeah, I might be <laughs> Elmo Fudd. 
I might be able to get rid of the wind rower altogether once I test this out on, um, I have a big field of clover over here and then another field down there of alfalfa, which you bale up, you know, for cattle feed and stuff, but you do it like grass. So once I see that it works well for that, because with my little mower machine there, it's going to take some doing. All right, so let's lower this down, or it already was. There we go, and I'll start outside of the cab. Being that we're driving outside the cab, that's a good segue right into the main topic that I really want to tell you about, and I should have started out with it, <laughs> but that's me and my thought process. Sometimes I leave a subject 20 miles down the road and start going off on another tangent. So before I do that, my friend Aiden has a YouTube channel. It's simply called AK, and he does farming simulator videos. Now, if any of you out there don't know Aiden, his family owns Lone Oak Farm, okay? And uh, you probably also know him from FSUK. Uh, he did a lot of uh, mod testing for them, and he, you know, was always happy to help with, you know, their little issues and stuff like that. Uh, really, really wonderful guy. He's a very close friend of mine, so I want to promote his channel here and ask you to please go over and watch his videos and subscribe. He's currently playing two maps. The first one is Galvin Valley FS15. I am in love with Galvin Valley. I played that into the ground. I made a lot of episodes, well for me a lot of episodes of Galvin Valley FS15 on my channel. Um, but he really enjoys that map a lot because it's just so special and so nice and um, we both know the mod map author um, Wild Wild Wes and uh, he did an incredible incredible job making that map I spent many hours hundreds of hours uh, on that map enjoying it even off camera so he also is doing the uh, FS17 version of Lone Oak Farm and what he's been doing is really, really special. Let's make sure that's picking up. Oh yeah, there we go. Is that our first bail? Hooray, celebrate. Um, as he's going along, like the first three videos, he's doing a bit more real life showcasing than farming on the game. But he's showing you photos, he's telling you stories, sharing memories, and even after he gets further into the series while he's playing the game he's continuing to talk about his experiences working and growing up on Lone Oak Farm and uh, also sharing his gameplay with you as well and I think it is fantastic for some people watching this type of content watching somebody drive up and down a field doing the common work is boring very boring right but when you have a pleasant person with a pleasant sounding speaking voice that has interesting things to say, it takes on a whole nother level. And that's what you're gonna get from Aiden, is a whole nother level of farming simulator gameplay. Because what he's doing for real is what I tried to do with my role play stories. Tried to not just show a farmer in a tractor day in and day out, because there's more to a farmer's life than that, a lot more. And anybody out there that's potentially watching that's a real farmer you know this to be true you know you have a life outside of a tractor in a farm field so I used to try to make my stories all-encompassing show the day-to-day -day farm work and I would research and learn what I could from friends and on my own and bring that into my stories but I'm not a real farmer my I come from a family of real farmers um, my great-grandparents they were born and raised on farms in Italy and when they came over here they started farms and their children had a couple of farms but I was too little then and I remember visiting and doing little things here and there but nothing like Aiden. When I started playing farming simulator <laughs> I didn't know nothing <laughs> believe me and we didn't have any of this type of equipment. Most of the stuff they were small fields and some were a little large but uh, all the stuff was harvested by hand and by sickle but um, nothing compared to the experiences that Aiden has and uh, the memories that he has growing up on the farm. My grandfather was one of the biggest potato dealers on the East Coast. <laughs> so he had a business uh, 
down in the city where he had a you know a few trucks and uh, a warehouse and that's where he would conduct his potato distribution business and because of the size of the land that they had they couldn't grow enough potatoes to you know keep up demand of a good you know flourishing business so he would get up at two o'clock in the morning and he would drive up into the country in the middle of the night and that's when all the farmers and the distributors would wheel and deal you know you'd get all the potatoes that you need from the farmers and uh, come to an agreement on the price and, you know do a fair markup wholesale so that's basically what my grandpa did and he made a good fair bit of money at it too and i loved spending my summer vacations and holiday vacations from school going with him to work it was just i loved it and he had an old white 65 chevy pickup that he would drive to work and uh i remember you know it'd be thundering down the main road into the city in that truck and uh, every time he'd go over a bump he'd laugh because <laughs> the glove box latch didn't work anymore and now this is a metal dashboard okay and so the glove box door was metal he had it kind of sort of secured clothes with a, with a rubber band <laughs> a very thick rubber band they used to put around the stems of uh, broccoli rob so it's a little short fat rubber band and he'd wrangle that in there but every time you go over a bump and you do it on purpose that door would spring open like a jack-in-the-box and crack you in the knee <laughs> not hard enough to hurt but just enough so you know it gets your attention but uh he had a lot of fun with that so i guess Aiden has inspired me through his videos, getting back to Aiden, of course, to, um, to try this out for myself and suspend the role play for a little bit. And maybe some people would be interested in getting to know more of me as a person. I mean, I'm not going to overshare and tell you every detail of my life. This is YouTube. It's public and it's just none of anybody's concern. But I would like to share some of my special memories with all of you because I have a lot of subscribers that have been with me uh, close to or at the very beginning of my YouTube journey. And some of them have been so supportive that they've watched some of my game videos and other content that I know they're not even remotely interested in. But they do it anyway because they enjoy our friendship outside of YouTube. And I would like to express my sincere gratitude to you guys. You know who you are. Um, I won't call you out by name. I don't know if you want that or not. If you do, I'm happy to mention you. Yeah, so Aiden had said that I inspired him to start making YouTube videos, and uh, he also inspired me to start making videos again, especially farming videos again. So I want to give a sincere thanks to Aiden, and again, I'll put a link to his channel down in the description it's going to be in every video i do from now on and uh, go on over check out his videos leave him uh, some kind words in the comment section and don't forget to hit the thumbs up for him too so he can you know smile when he sees that people like his videos and the subscriber counts are going up and so forth and so on doesn't matter if you're a new or old seasoned youtuber you always like to see those particular things thumbs up you like to see your subscriber counts, of course, go up and your views go up. Um, it just kind of motivates you to continue making videos and you know that you're not talking to your computer monitor. You're actually talking to people that would like to watch. <laughs> All right, time to go inside for a little bit. So, yeah, this little rowing bailing thing, for the most part, is working out fantastic. It's a keeper. You're going to keep it on the farm. And you're probably going to see it come up in other videos. There's several different versions in this pack. There's this New Holland one, and you can change the colors of the New Holland uh, baler uh, to New Holland blue, this color, and then the U.S. version, which is red and yellow. Yeah, so they got the case, the New Holland, the Crone, and the Kloss. And these are all square balers. And again, that's right in the Giants Mod Hope, so pick it up and try it out for yourself. Now, I apologize, too, if this video, again, seems a little all over the place and kind of rushed um, I'm actually going on a trip in about three hours <laughs> so I wanted to get this video recorded I don't know if I'm gonna post it now or when I get back home did I hit that bail no nope, I'm good it's probably best if you're going on a trip uh, to uh, post the video when you get back that way people don't know the house is empty so I'll probably wind up doing that but just know that I'm I have my clothes packed we have several other things to get together, and it's just a long weekend down to Arizona. But uh, 
Yeah, we're going to drive. We were going to fly, but the airline ticket prices are uh, very expensive, even to go from Nevada to Arizona. And then the car rental, we'd have to do that. And then, of course, our accommodations. You're talking, you know, a couple thousand dollars for from Friday to Sunday. So that's out of the question. So we could save money by driving our car. All we have to worry about then is the gasoline and the accommodations. But it's going to be a, um, a bit of a drive, a long drive. So it's going to take us because we have to stop a few times because I have a permanent back injury. So I have to take breaks. And uh, my wife has to have frequent bathroom stops. <laughs> TMI. But uh, yeah, so it's usually about close to a five-hour drive. But it's probably going to take us about between six and seven hours. So we'll leave our home about two in the afternoon and then uh, we will uh, hit the road and we probably won't get there until seven o'clock so tonight will be a wash but we'll probably leave again in the afternoon around noontime or after lunch on sunday and come back home so it'll be it'll be a nice little getaway okay so i got a few lines to do over there but i think you get the gist of it i'm gonna finish this up off cam or maybe now nah, i'm not gonna pick up where we left off <laughs> you know, you've seen enough of this but the next time we come back, we'll be gathering up the bales and then we're going to start preparing this field uh, because we're in March. And I think come April, I can plant some corn here. So I'd like to have, I don't know what it is, but uh, I like to have corn growing in the fields closest to the, to the farmhouse. <laughs> Again, growing up, my great grandmother, she had a big patch of corn growing right out back of the house. So you walk out your back door and you could pretty much lean over the rail and yank an ear of corn. <laughs> and I just like the look of the corn. So we're going to plant corn in this particular field. So thank you very much for tuning in and keeping me company if you've made it this far. And I hope to see you in the next video. I'm going to put out more of these videos. We'll see how it's received, if it's well received or not. And uh, we'll go from there. Little beta video test, if you will. <laughs> so again, thank you very much for tuning in. If you think that I did a good job, please, if you wouldn't mind, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe and share the video with your friends if you find it share worthy. And until we meet again, take great care of yourself, okay? And bye for now. I always miss something, that's for sure. Even with this big old rakes, I still miss little OCD. <laughs> Goodbye, hurting someone.